to our first Friday. Welcome everyone to our first Friday forum. I'm Stephanie Immelman. I'm the CEO of the Chamber. And we've got our, our hosts back online this month. We've got David Beal and Michael Weiner, um, both of which probably have a lot of opinions with respect to affordable housing. So I'm going to turn it over to them so they can introduce our guest um, this week. So who wants to start? David, you always start off. Go ahead. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Fra Fabulous Friday, First Friday Forum. So tonight, today, we were really happy to have Suzanne Cabrera with us. Suzanne is the president and CEO of the Housing Leadership Council, a nonprofit 501c3 organization founded in 2006 by community and business leaders to address workforce affordable housing issues all over the, the county. Or maybe it's the country, she'll tell us. Um, the organization is an action-oriented coalition of business, civic, and community leaders working to increase the availability and attainability of housing for area residents. Ms. Carrera participates in many professional volunteer roles, including serving as board chair of the Florida Housing Coalition, and she is a tireless advocate for housing issues and speaks at the local, state, and national level. Welcome, Suzanne Cabrera. Okay. Um, is it okay if I share my screen? I guess it'll stop the screen. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Okay, this part, Alice, makes me nervous with the uh, trying to get the everything lined up here. There we go. Okay, well, I'm thrilled to be here with you today. Um, I feel like I've been doing housing in Palm Beach County for over 30 years, and this is kind of the year of housing. Um, if you hadn't heard, and uh, I, I can refer you to other places to get more information about SB 102, housing is the word up in Tallahassee. I never thought I'd live to see the day where we're talking about housing up there, but I think we'll have a very good year for Sadowski. And um, it, as I said, if you haven't seen uh, Senate Bill 102 or know what's going on with that, I can send a link. Uh, we actually are doing an update today on that. And there's a lot of exciting things going on. But housing is a concern for Palm Beach County. And we kind of knew it was that way, but just like everything, we really had to measure it before we got started. So um, what we did was an affordable housing needs assessment, which came out uh, actually right in the middle of the pandemic. It was really from 2000 to 2019. We have this study on our website, but the takeaway is we found out in those nine years, we fell behind 20,000 units, which was startling to me. I mean, I knew we were gonna have um, a deficit and how we did this was look at all the people coming in and leaving Palm Beach County and the number of building starts. And that's when we realized that's contributing significantly um, the supply and demand imbalance to the crisis we're facing. So we do have that study. We have proof that we have a real problem here. And um, just some other facts that have happened just 2017 to 2022 uh, that made the problem worse. The population grew by 4.6%. Um, businesses increased. We have uh, record uh, low unemployment. Our agricultural employment grew. Our leisure and hospitality saw the biggest gains in employment in terms of jobs in 2022. Uh, there is nationwide logistical supply issues, a tremendous rise in construction costs. And that really has been stunning. I've seen uh, some deals go up by 30% just trying to get the uh, labor and supplies from one year to the next. So they get all their financing in place and then go to start building. And they're like, oops, this is a problem. <laughs> We, we don't have enough money. So the low housing supply and high demand is going to continue to be a challenge. And another problem, of course, is wages aren't keeping up with the rise in home prices, which I think uh, everybody has seen that we're really having a problem in that area. So that kind of, uh, and just to, I, and I let you have 
all have this chart, but some people ask, what is affordable and workforce housing? And we go by AMI, so um, area median income, which ours is skewed a little high. But when I talk about we're serving people at low income, we're talking about 73,000 for a family of four. And I was just speaking to the school board this week and they were shocked to find out that a lot of their employees are very low income. And we really have to come up with some solutions and um, start uh, actually put everything together. So um, as a result of finding out um, we had this crisis, we did a Palm Beach County housing plan. Um, I know Michael on this call, we had been, has been meeting for years. The second Wednesday of every month has just been the time to all get together and figure out how are we gonna get ourselves out of this issue? And it really has expertise from all over the county, um, planners, the counties, the municipalities, um, legal, you name it, we have it in that meeting, which is really very helpful. And that meeting now has about 50 people in it. So we do get a wide variety of input and support. And then of course we have the smaller committees. Um, in that. So we have finished that plan also available on our site. And the plan con consists of four main areas, funding and financing. And this bond is just one portion of that part of the plan, planning and regulatory reform, neighborhood revitalization. Um, I know that's a topic um, Michael loves to talk about. And this will all be through a lens of racial equity. Um, we should have our racial equity assessment done any day now, and then we'll be featuring that. Because once again, we can't address a problem without really knowing what the issue is and what home ownership rates are and really um, what's in place before and the problems before we decide how to tackle it. But the funding and financing um, part, we have uh, decided that, you know, we can't count on the state for funding. The Fed funding can be difficult and come with so many restrictions. So we decided we had to take care of ourselves. And this was an idea that we came up with um, a series of bond issues totaling 200 million with a goal of producing 20,000 units over the next year. And this would be affordable and workforce. You can go back to that chart and see who we're we're serving. Obviously, the bond can't be all of it because that would work out to $10,000 a unit and that kind of gap financing, although helpful, will not be enough. So the idea is this bond will help with um, production, but it won't be the only answer. So we will have to look to other sources, other leveraging, and that's part of our plan as well to really build capacity, make sure that people know how to apply for these other um, sources, that they're aware of them. Impact fee credits, that's one we found out that people just weren't aware of and the school board's thinking about offering impact fee credits now too. So we're really looking at everything we can put together and leverage around these bonds, but we figured, out, figured that would make a great statement if we could get that money available to us here locally. So this is something that um, we have been working on. I feel like uh, that was my life's work um, all over the summer, uh, but we had it approved by voters on November 8th, um, 2022. We could have gone with a revenue bond or a GO bond, but the county felt a GO bond would be um, the right way to go, but you do have to bring that to the voters and um, get it passed. And we were concerned, this was a tough year in a lot of ways to get things through, but we did pass it by 58%. And we took it one step further. We decided once we started releasing all this money, the county went through all this work, we wanted to make sure there would be no issues with it. So we went ahead and took the proactive step of having it validated in the courts. And that happened on February 17th. So we know all the funds we put out. No one's going to come back later and say, oh, you didn't do that right. There was a problem with it. Um, so we took that step. And then um, the accompanying resolution that the county passed with it, which is kind of our, our guideline for it, our basis for everything. And um, it, it had odd wording, which was also my problem in trying to sell it to folks. But workforce and affordable housing units will consist of the acquisition, construction, and equipping of the following. And we included um, basically all types of units, condos, multifamily, single family homes, which I'll tell you are going to be a little bit tougher to do, but we're still going to do that. 
and townhomes. So that's really what we're looking at uh, producing. And this whole bond is around production. It was a result of seeing that study and saying, wow, we are so many units behind. And the bond process will be, um, and requirements, the bond will be issued by the county. The county was the only way to go. They have a AAA bond rating. They can do this and really are the appropriate source to be doing this. They are going to put the funds out um, by request for proposals um, for the funds to be used by developers. The bonds will be the term of 20 years from the date of issuance. So that's the, the repayment. Um, of the initial bonds, although you'll find out it's a revolving fund. So they are loans, they come back. So this will provide kind of a permanent source of financing, which we also felt was a really good feature to this. And all units assisted with the bonds will carry a minimum affordability of 30 years. We wanna be able to make sure when we put these units in place that we get the bang for the buck with them and um, it, do it for a, a, a maximum affordability period. And we really looked at everything like, will it uh, pro forma's pencil out? And when you see the percentage rates, um, they'll be from zero to 3%, that is cheap funding. And that will replace the really expensive equity, the more expensive debt. So um, it really, I think will work out in the end and provide that um, cheaper source of financing that developers need to fill those gaps. There will no, be no buyout, reduction of terms, removal of restrictions in this, and bonds will serve as permanent financing for multifamily rental units and will be loans for construction financing for home ownership. An important feature of a general obligation bond is it has to serve a paramount public purpose. And that became a little bit trickier when we were doing the individual home ownership because we couldn't benefit one homeowner and give them kind of a windfall on this. It really had to be a process and funds that would um, assist the whole process. And that's what we heard from single family developers is if we could make this construction financing cheaper, we could sell the home for less. And that's really what we're going for. And it will still have that restriction on it. As I said, interest rates um, will be from zero to 3%. So um, it will go through underwriting, but we anticipate the 0% to be for nonprofits that are doing that really hard to fund um, lower income housing and, and serving the, the very low, extremely low income. Um, we want to make that money as cheap as possible. And then even up to 3%, depending on what the underwriting shows, that's really inexpensive money at this point. Um, in time and all awards have to be approved by the board of county commissioners it's their money and they are putting it out and honestly we are working on the rfp process right now and public input will be um received prior to putting out that rfp so if you're interested in this or know a developer that wants to be involved in this um we can let you know when that public input will be. I think it's going to be fairly soon because our big holdup was getting the bonds validated, which we now have. And um, people ask me, where are these units going to go? Like we're at build out. Where do you see any vacant space right now? And we are going to try to make you know, our plan and we looked at all this, we wouldn't just go in and provide a bunch of money without looking at it. Um, we're going to put it on major, major thoroughfares near employment that can handle the density. We also are going to take a serious look at adaptive reuse and have been where there are vacant shopping centers or other commercial uses that can be converted to residential. And there is things in a previous bill, House Bill 1669, and then SB 102, is making it easier for municipalities in the county to go ahead and convert some of those uses without having to send it up and get all these changes. They can just say, if we're using it for this purpose, especially affordable housing, it can just go right through. And then the Glades will also have an opportunity. This is something that um, we've been looking at and, and we may need a little more subsidy out there. As I said, it, it doesn't work out to $200 million 
million equals 20,000 units. It's 200 million will leverage and get us on our way. But we will have to use things like the increased ship money we're anticipating this year and other sources to make sure we can get that done. And some important factors in this, um, the bond issue does not impact the approval process for residential units. So if Delray, if another um, municipality is building these units, it still has to go through the regular approval process. They are going to the county for funding, not for approval of the the process. So it's it's not like it sidesteps anything that will happen at the, the local level and all those still have to be approved where the units are being constructed. So we want to make sure that everybody understood it separates those two things. You're going to the county to, to get that cheap money and you still have to go through your municipality. Although, of course, we're going to encourage municipalities um, to really, and the county, to really make this a swift process and, and really get these units through because we know the dire need we have right now. And um, I always like to talk about the cost of the bond. This is something that was the most important selling point. And we show when we bring the community together um, to tackle a problem, it doesn't have to be that expensive. People were thinking it's hundreds of dollars. And I guess for some of the more expensive homes, it could be. But the cost of this bond will be $4.36 per $100,000 of assessed value. And for the average homeowner, which is $550,000 when we um, put the bond in place, that would equate to $14 a year. So we want to really assure people um, we have to solve this problem. We we have no choice. Um, our teachers are getting desperate. Um, and then all the service workers, that's something that I would talk about all the time where you see restaurants, um, it seemed like they have empty tables, but they just don't have the staff to uh, to serve those tables and we have a CVS near me that's closed all the time because they don't have the minimum of two employees to run the store when we talk more about it and the tourist development council did a study which found housing was a number one reason of course um the uh the pay was also important, but this is something we also have to look at when your housing prices are so far out of touch with what people can afford. We have to do that. And the bond will address that critical supply and demand imbalance. So that's the purpose of this. The bond equals production um, as our plan goes. And um, that's really what this one specific part of the housing plan will address. And I figured I'd just leave it open for questions, um, and there's more to come on this. I don't have all the answers right now, but anything I do know about this, I'm happy to share with you. Let's see if we have some questions from uh, our participants, and um, maybe the city staff wants to uh, speak a little about our local Delray policy with respect to affordable housing. I have a quick question. So we're getting ready to um, prepare our advocacy efforts for the upcoming legislative session in Tallahassee, and you mentioned Senate Bill 102. Can you tell me a little more about that? Yes, that is something where we kind of knew this was coming. Um, Senator Pasadomo has been a housing champion for years. She's a Republican. She is the Senate um, president this year, and this is her main issue. So she has put together Senate Bill 102. I will send you the link if you want to send it out. Um, the Florida Housing Coalition does uh, half an hour, just very brief um, summary workshops on this uh, presentations every on Fridays at 1130. So that's available, but it really is full of additional funding for once they are recommending 
we're going to say full funding. Everyone knows a couple years ago they made a move that cut Sadowski, um, and we have to share it with septic to sewer and also with uh, resiliency. But this will be full funding to the degree we can have it, but general revenues for the first time. And that's so exciting that um, the total package they're putting together this year will have $800 million in funding for housing. And um, you go to Tallahassee, and that's what they're talking about. And boy, how Hallelujah, as far as I'm concerned. It's full of tax incentives and it's set in exemptions. One thing they take in that idea of corporate uh, corporations that have a tax debt in the state of Florida can put that into Florida Housing Finance Corporation and put their tax debt toward building housing. We love that idea. Um, even things like sales tax refunds for building materials, there is a provision that will make it easier for local governments to approve uh, density and intensity, um, basically let local governments take on um, the burden of, or, or not the burden, make it easier to take on that burden of increasing intensity and density, because um, that's the hardest thing. You get to the end, and NIMBYs come in, and at this point, you can say, hey, the, the state um, said this is something that we have to do. So it's really, there's um, a few provisions they're tweaking in there, and they're really trying to provide um, some tax relief and things like that, which I know will concern municipalities. So I encourage, especially at the municipal level and the county level, for everyone to learn about the bill because it's moving quick. Honestly, on the Senate side, it's already through both committees. But um, Kathleen Pastomo said, this is only my first year and I'm really willing to fix any unintended consequences or bring up any new issues my second year. Um, she really is a housing champion. Um, the House side is not moving along um, quite as quickly, so that may provide more chances to uh, make some changes to this, but it's her intention to have this on the governor's desk within a few weeks of the session starting. So I will send you that link, and um, if you sign up, you will get sent the recording later, so it's a no-lose situation. That's great, and you keep mentioning um, Sadowski. Can you just let our audience know what that means? Oh, yeah, that's our state housing trust fund um, that I remember the day it was passed. I know I'm dating myself um, back in 1992. And when doc stamps are paid and the um, on real estate transactions, a portion sent to uh, Tallahassee, and that is put into the state housing trust fund. And those funds come back to local municipalities um, to fund their Sadowski fund or their SHIP fund, which can attend to local needs for entitlement cities. And then we also have the sale funds, which are the apartment loan funds. So both important and it, we figured it was so brilliant because when the market heats up and there's more transactions, more doc stamps, the trust fund um, has more money to give out. And then when it things cool off there, you know, it's not needed as much, but it uh, became a source of funding for people to kind of um, rob <laughs> in the last decade or so. And that was uh, very frustrating that people in affordable housing and workforce housing um, are, are not the most vocal constituents. So it was very easy for them to dip in. In some years, they took the entire fund, which was really disappointing. But the legislation passed two years ago prohibits sweeps. So there's no more sweeps anymore of the Sadowski fund. So um, we get about 12 million a year in the county from that. We should be getting more, but like everything, we're a donor county. Um, so we wanna contribute um, or combine the ship funds, the sale funds, now this bond and really start to have um, what we need to start solving the problem here locally. That's great, thank you. All right, over to the host. I'm sure Michael has something to say. Or, or are there any questions? I'm sorry. Yeah, let's see, see if we can um, uh, get any participation. Uh, what, what, are the, what are the chances in the house, um, Suzanne? Oh, uh, for passing, um, yeah. it's going through. There is a companion bill that's identical. Um, as I said, they the house house moves a little slower, but um, we have been told this is a done deal. Oh, good. 
So, but there are some provisions that people are concerned about. And I can't stress enough that now is the time to deal with this because uh, it, it already went through. It will have three stops on the House side, but it only had two stops on the Senate side all the way through unanimous approval. So for the most part, I think it's a good bill. It, it does things like um, that some people are concerned about you you can't have rent control at all in the state of Florida, but we haven't anyways. And it has a few more provisions, um, especially giving those tax exemptions. I know that's something that would be concerned about some automatic um, exemption from taxes. But as I said, for the most part, I think a uh, great bill and and never have seen anything like $800 million before. <laughs> <laughs> have there been any discussions with the municipalities in Palm Beach County uh, what they may do with this uh, these funds available? Um, that's something where I I'm not as involved in things like the League of Cities and areas where that would be discussed. So hopefully those conversations are going on. But um, we are going to. Uh, be hiring another staff person just to help people coordinate um if a developer has an idea especially you know nonprofit or for-profit we're going to try to work on all the funding sources how to time them and provide any help we can on this okay so michael, any other what questions do you, what, what do you think michael um well, well ray is going to so do as, with this money? Yeah, as, as you can see, a lot of effort is going in. And right now, what's the lowest percentage of AMI we're assisting, Suzanne? Um, honestly, an RFP can come in with it um, wherever they'd like to. I know there are some mm -hmm. folks that are planning to use the bonds for um, youth transitioning out of foster care, and that's going to be a very low income. So, um, but the bond is primarily production. And the one thing we're excited about is it can free up some other funding that can be used on homelessness and extremely low income. Um, before they would put out CDBG and SHIP mm -hmm. to provide these subsidies to developers to get these going, they don't need that now. They will actually be able to just go to the bonds. So we figure the real benefit to this will be it'll free up money um, that's really intended to serve those. And, and other funds have gone up. We're looking good on the federal level as far as um, emergency shelter grants. Oh. And as I said, CDBD and um, SHIP can be used for, for any income, um, can go down the scale. So we're hoping uh, our local efforts will free those up. So, but, but for the most part, the assistance programs are aimed to 60% to 80%, at least the discussions of them are, are in the 60 to 80%. And 60% of AMI right now in, in Palm Beach County is approximately what, Suzanne, do you know? Um, I have that slide available. Yeah. I can get back to it where I... I thought it was about 80,000, but yeah, maybe... Yeah, there I'm... it is. Yeah, it's tough. We do have a high AMI, but when we put out these RFPs, we, um, there are, they are competitive and you're likely to get more dollars if you're willing to, to serve a little bit lower on the rung. And we're really looking for people to charge at the lower end. If it goes from, um, uh, brackets from 60 to 80 that, you know, it, it, we're really trying to make the rents match the actual income in that category. But if, if you're in, if, I guess the point I'm trying to make is if you're in Palm Beach County and you're not earning a six figure income, you you are probably in the neighborhood of, of, of desiring assistance. That's an incredibly high cost of housing in Palm Beach County. Um, particularly, uh, you, will, you will hear that about a third of someone's income or more goes, goes towards housing. We're just in a really expensive place because everybody wants to live here. After they get here, they'll all complain, but they want to move down here and live here. And it's and it's we've we've been talking about it. We can't build a a unit. We're talking about an apartment for anything less than three hundred or three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And and we all get it. We we there there are new hurricane rules. There's there's all sorts of things for being safe and for offering housing that that will last 
that drive these prices up. But if you have children, um, if anyone works a service job in any of the restaurants, um, you are unable to make your way up the housing chain. And we're just looking at this and we are providing a, a, a modicum of, of housing, but it's so small. And I, I'm, I'm really hopeful that may, be, no, that's great, Suzanne, that you told us that, that some of this will free up money for, for those who are below 40%. That would be tremendous. But uh, the point I wanted to make is Portland and San Francisco have reached their peak of desirability and everyone says I'm fleeing all because of the housing uh, crisis. And um, their view that most of the community is homeless. I don't know if they're right or wrong. Some people take a strong reaction when they see the blue uh, tents and, and, and uh, they see a disheveled person. It's, it's hard to say if they're doing it based upon numbers, but it doesn't really make any difference. If in fact we get a reputation that somehow or another we can't, it, it, people can't afford us. And don't forget Silicon Valley's moving here and the, the New York uh, uh, banking industry is moving here and they're all moving here. We will, we will drown in our own success. And I think that's one important thing where we sent a strong message with this bond with the county approving it. That was my biggest fear that the county would not approve it. And we'd send that message. We don't care about this. But remember, the bond helps in two ways. It'll help fill that supply and demand gap where hopefully we'll get back to the days when I moved here and got a free washer and dryer with a move in <laughs> and any um, money bond money that touches a unit, it'll make that unit deed restricted for 30 years. So that unit will be cheaper. And we figured out even if they charged a little bit more, the most they'd be paying is about 36% of their income. But the goal is ours, 30% of their income. So the bond has that like double effect of uh, filling the uh, supply and demand imbalance. And then also, as I said, um, we will make sure people know these are county assisted units and they can go in just like Del Rey has some of these and um, and have a cheaper rate depending on their their income level. Well, well don't let them off the hook just because we've passed. Oh, wait, that was the first right. thing we said. No <laughs> getting around this. <laughs> if you so pay they, the, the cheap they, money, you're, you're in. The other part of the story is that is you can see how much effort Suzanne and, and a great number of people took in trying to get the bond over the line. And the reason that the effort is so great and the addition to the problem is the simple fact that everybody who moves to Florida wants to put up the fence and wants to say they're the last person in. It is very unfortunate, but all public policy, this is, everyone should shed a tear over. All public policy is driven by, I can't make it through a light in one change and it's too crowded and I want my neighbor's home to be something I like. Now, after you get over those issues, you go to any hearing on any housing, any project you're offering, those are the only two things that come up from the public. And then the other unfortunate thing is politicians like to be elected. That's wonderful. I get it. We're a democracy. But after hearing it and hearing it and hearing it, unfortunately, certainly at the local level, all the politicians can only give in to it. There aren't politicians who are trying to take these people and lift them out of this uh, endless trap and say, look, the best place we can have is to have diversity in housing. It will get a little more crowded, but not a lot. This is not why you have traffic. And you do not have to worry that these are hovels or projects. They don't look like New York. You aren't going by a barracks. If we can get people, both the land planners and the politicians to say, please, this is not your greatest fear. We will go a long way not, to not end up like San Francisco or Portland. Um, there are Wait. 180, yeah, well, there are 186,000, is it million acres? 
when 1 million 860 million acres in in Palm Beach County there are 1 million 560,000 people the point being we're right now at a density of about one person per acre ain't too dense sorry <laughs> that's a good, that's a good uh, statistic well done um so Vivian please. has a question oh go ahead I, I do. Right. My question was, uh, sorry, oh. Michael, but it's okay. Um, I, yes, I have a question regarding, um, I, I think I heard you say, um, Suzanne, that um, there uh, is an opportunity to free up some additional funds if we're uh, using these dollars for affordable housing for the very low income. Can you speak to those dollars that would be available now for the very low income? That's definitely an area of interest for me. That's something um, that we really have made this part of our plan and talk to the county that um, some of the funds every year they'll put out CDBG funds or SHIP funds for developments um, for this kind of subsidy. And from now on, the county has said, if you want these additional funds, we're not going to be using SHIP and CDBG on this. And um, ESG, I don't think is used on it as much. Um, go for our bond funding. So um, those are typically multi-million dollar offerings every single time. So um, that will be the important thing. And we know the Department of Community Services, I was on a call the other day, they have gotten a lot more funding. Um, the county has done an amazing job sent, um, spending um, the COVID relief dollars and have gotten additional dollars. So I think, um, and, and that's also something we're doing is trying to have those conversations with James Green and make sure we're coordinating because the county can be kind of like the three different housing things where you do community services, the housing department with Jonathan Brown, and then a planning and zoning with Ramsey. So we're talking together, but I think it's important if you're interested in that type of funding to have a discussion with James Green. And then, as I said, we'll also see more available now that um, we will have this other source to send developers to because it, it was so expensive here. We had to offer something. We wouldn't get our 9% deals without this contribution. Now we have another way of doing that. And 9% um, tax credit deals are the way we get a lot of that very affordable housing, especially with income averaging. If you um, go to the CLT, um, has done a lot of these apartments. They have apartments that are $500 a month. That's pretty good. I mean, it, it's still some people need more, and that's when you have to go for the vouchers. And the other great news is we are getting more vouchers here in Palm Beach County. So when you do want to send people to the housing authorities um, that really just need that extra assistance where they will get help and pain um, for their apartment, more of those are coming. So it'll be good to check with your housing authority on those. Thank you. Um, any other questions for Suzanne? We could talk about this all day, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. And I'm always available. I, I'm like Michael, I love to talk about housing. <laughs> And uh, we'll we'll talk about it. And Stephanie, I will send you that information on uh, how to get the information on um, Senate Bill 102 and Sadowski. And then as soon as this comes out, um, the public thing, I will make sure. You're, I think you're already on our list to get those notifications. But we will make sure um, we get those out to you so you can send it out to your group. Great. And can you put your contact info in the chat for people in case they want to reach sure out to will. you? Okay. I would Thank be you. Happy to talk to people. Thank you so much, Suzanne. This is, um, it's a very important topic. I really appreciate your time today. And there's obviously a lot of interest in it. So thank you so much. So I'm going to hand it back over to um, our host, to David. I think it's time for our partner reports. Yes. Uh, let's start with the city, Stephanie. Uh, Kent Edwards, is he still on? Uh, okay. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Ken Edwards, uh, sustainability officer, and uh, give a give an update. Just focusing on on Earth Day. Um, that is uh, April twenty second, and for the first year, I'm going to move um, to uh, celebrating Earth Month. Uh, a lot of places are doing that, and I think this year we're going to have enough activities to where we can we can really justify that. Um, so uh, I'm going to set up four uh, meetings during the month virtual meetings to promote the green building ordinance and have one 
of the green building certification programs, either um, FGBC, NGBS, Green Globes, or LEAF. On each of those, have an hour, talk about the new ordinance, talk about that certification program. And even though the, um, the date for implementation is November 1st, we'll start getting more um, information out there. And so throughout the month, we're going to have lot, lots of different activities, water conservation and movies and that kind of thing. On April 19th, leading up to actual Earth Day, uh, we'll be on Delray Morning Live. So thank you very much uh, to the chamber for, for uh, uh, arranging that. Um, looks like it will be at Lionfish. And we'll be talking about business opportunities in the sustainable area. And Lionfish is looking into a dish or a sustainable activity that they can promote. So really looking forward to that. Also, uh, the chamber and uh, other partners are, are gonna sponsor a cleanup on Earth Day. Um, and uh, on Earth Day, we're gonna have a, a tree giveaway. We're uh, gonna have a, a planting at uh, one of the parks and just all, all kinds of really good activities in, in the beginning of, of April at First Friday Forum. I, I should have a much more detailed update for now. That's it. Thank you, Ken. Uh, staying with the city, we'll go for Lean uh, Messator. Is she still on? No? Yeah, she's on. Ferline, did you want to make, um, Ferline is from the Neighborhood and Community Services. Did you want to do a quick report? Hi, yes, I was trying to look for my mute button. My unmute <laughs> button. <laughs> um, as always, the city still has um, funds available for purchase assistance, um, for rental assistance, for slash security, um, and also rental assistance for, um, sorry, rehabilitation, um, up to $60,000. So if you know of any families that are within the very low to moderate income um, bracket, please send them our way. We also do implement our curb appeal program with funds by the CRA as well. Um, and so there's more than enough funds. Um, we are the staff is ready and um, to take applications from um, interested parties. That's excellent. Can you put your contact information in the chat too, please? Yes, I can do that. Thank you. Um, Chief Tommy, welcome. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, don't have much to offer today other than the fact that we are hiring um, firefighter paramedics and firefighter EMTs. The uh, applications do close tomorrow. So if you know somebody who's interested in being a firefighter paramedic or EMT, please make sure they uh, go online and, and uh, fill, out, fill out the application by tomorrow at 1600 or four o'clock. Also, I wanna remind everybody that March 11th, is our St. Patrick's Day Parade and Festival. So make sure you get plans to come out to see that. It's always a great time. And the last thing is that I'm proud to, uh, to inform you guys that we finished our Knox Box upgrade. that has been completed. We've hit every business that has a Knox Box in the city and upgraded it to the new electronic key version. So uh, that's all done. Uh, it, we did it within six days. So there was uh, no hiccups, no problems. You, probably, you guys probably didn't notice, know we were out there and then it even happened, but uh, that's the way we wanted it to, to go down. So with that being said, I'm all, all done and I'll answer any questions you may have about the fire department. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Um, no questions, we'll go to the CRA and Alexina. Hi, Alexina. everybody. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, thank Good morning. you. Good, Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to share uh, a little bit about what's happening at the CRA. Uh, tomorrow, stop by Crafted on the Ave. It's at Libby Wesley Plaza from 1 to 5 p.m. Um, we are highlighting like local, local home-based and micro-businesses just to help, help them get some exposure um, as well as um, getting foot traffic and revitalizing the Northwest Fifth Avenue corridor. Um, we also have an opportunity for affordable retail and office spaces. So if you or a business owner you know is looking for a new office space, we will be releasing a 
call for proposals in the coming months. Um, and if you're interested, please let me know. I can share, um, keep you, uh, get your information so that we can keep you posted. We also have, we're about to reopen our paint up and signage funding program. This pro, we recently made some changes to all of the programs. And this is one that is still going to be available district wide. Um, we would award up to $5,000 or 50% of paint up and signage costs for external um, beautification of your business uh, property. And, and I'll share in the chat a quarterly update video that we recently um, posted on YouTube, just sharing more about what's happening at the CRA. And today is also First Friday, so check out the Arts Warehouse, where we'll have a new exhibit um, opening, and um, just check out what's happening at the CRA. Thank you. Lexi, you know, what's happening? What's the status of the uh, container project on West Atlantic? There are no updates for that as of yet. Um, that did come up in conversation a couple of days ago, um, but I don't have any updates on, on that as, it, as of yet. Okay. Any other questions for the CRA? Okay, let's go to Jackie Ramirez. Small business, tell us about small business, Jackie. Good morning, I couldn't get my video on. Um, well, I want, wanted to share with you some additional funding that's coming in. Um, back in 2021, there was, um, under the um, American Rescue Plan Act, there were $10 billion put up for states to apply for a piece of, to actually pull into their state to help small businesses in a variety of ways. The state of Florida um, applied and received approval for $488 million. The DEO, the Department of Economic Opportunity and Enterprise Florida are partnering to identify lenders to pull into that program. Um, so we are now waiting for more detail on exactly how that will roll out and we'll update you as we get more information. But what you would wanna know is that one, we do need to have hear from lenders. They'll be reaching out to the lenders to try to pull them into um, the various programs. There are several different ways that small businesses and those are businesses under 500 employees, um, all the way as small as startups. So there is actually an, an, uh, a particular program for venture um, there's programs for organizations or small businesses that need help with collateral. There are um, programs that help them actually go after um, loans with lower interest rates, but it is designated specifically for small businesses and protected for them. The, I wanted to, a, a number of people have heard of this plan. It's the State Small Business Credit Initiative, SSBI, and they're starting to reach out and ask to apply. Um, the role that the SBDC plays in funding programs like this is we become um, a mentor to the small business, helping them understand what programs exist, what they qualify for, um, who are the lenders that might be available to them. We then work with the lenders to help select the lender that, that can best support them for the needs that they have. And then we work with the lender and the small business to get through the application to make sure the funding gets assigned. And then we help the small business actually manage, understand how to manage that money and put it to its best use. So we don't do the funding, but we do help um, manage that process and make it as easy as possible for the small business owner. So hopefully I'll be able to come back to you soon with more details and how, um, how you can share that information and how we can help our small businesses get access to this funding as soon as it's made available. Okay, and thank you. Thanks, Jackie. We're gonna look for some write-ups for you so we can send this out to our constituents. And Absolutely, Absolutely. Thanks. So Stephanie, uh, between you and Vivian, you got six minutes. Okay, well, I'm gonna hand it over to Vivian to talk a little bit about um, our advocacy efforts. We do we have the legislative session coming up. So I can show you our, 
our new newsletter that we're sending out. Go over to you, Vivian. Sure. So we met for the first time this uh, year, this new um, for 2023, just recently to discuss, you know, what we're going to do, what our vision for the advocacy committee really for this upcoming year. So as always, we're going to advocate for our members, for the, the interests of our, our, our members. We are committed to joining forces for advocacy on, on issues that are important to our um, community. And we're also interested in providing education to our members, our, the, the, our members regarding some of the issues that they should uh, be aware of. Um, and that they sh they may want to have a voice in. Uh, our first meeting, really, we we put out a newsletter, and it was uh, really about the uh, to educate our our community about or our members about the geo bond here locally. Um, we're meeting again next week, uh, Tuesday at 11 a.m. And this one is really to look at three bills. Uh, one, which is SB 102 on housing, um, SB 202, which is the bill regarding uh, the voucher program um, for education. And the third one is uh, SB 236, which is on tort reform. So our goal is really to really, um, as an advocacy committee, to weigh in, um, to support where we can, and also, again, to educate our members, to send information to our members, to let them be aware of what's going on so that they, they can also um, have an opportunity to support on issues that are important to them. We also had um, Erica uh, Whitfield and Jay uh, Bogus um, come in uh, from um, the school district uh, to speak to our board last week about uh, their legislative agenda. So we'll be talking about that as well and seeing how we can provide support to our school district in um, some of the issues that are important to them. So that is where we're at. So Vivian, let's just point out that, you know, t starting teachers we learned were 49,000 and after about five years, it goes up to all of 54,000. So teachers can't afford to live in Palm Beach County and we have a shortage of teachers. So it all ties into affordable Without housing. Doubt. Without a doubt. Um, some of the funds that the school district are requesting are to continue to elevate um, teacher salaries, which is critical to be able to live in our county and provide our kids with the education that they need. Absolutely. If you really take a look at it after taxes, a salary at 50,000 and what it costs to live in our county, it, you can't, you can just pay your rent. You can't do much more above that. Okay, thank you so much, Vivian. We've got a lot going on with advocacy and we just wanna make sure that you guys knew about that. And you'll be, uh, we'll be sending out this um, newsletter every month. We'll have a topic that we discuss and then we'll share links for important meetings and, and information as it comes up each month. So be looking for that. Um, for chamber update, we've got a ton of grant openings this month. We did one, we did two this week, um, one at Love and Healing and the other one at Butterbelly in the Andre Design District. We've got about six or seven businesses in the Andre Design District that are new chamber members. So there's a lot going on there. Um, Nonprofit Council is on March 7th. That's next week. We've got the Real Estate Roundtable on March 9th, and that's at Sklar Furnishings. Um, we have other grand openings, there's one on March 9th at Network Funding and Exit Realty on March 15th. It's a grand opening at Hampton Social. We've got a grand opening on March 21st at Sparkle, Sparkle Communications, which is in the Andre Design District. And on the 23rd, we have one at Revive. So that's the good news. Lots of new members and lots of new businesses and lots of grand openings, which is very exciting. We have our normal contacts and cocktails on March 16th. That'll be at the Tipsy Salon Bar on Linton. That's a beautiful space. Our tourism roundtables via Zoom, we're going to hear from Heather Andrews from Discover the Palm Beaches. They had a great event recently at the O, which is a recap of what's going on at the county with respect to tourism. And she's going to give a shortened version of that presentation for all of our members. And of course, our white pattern and professionals will be at the OG this month. And coming up April 14th, 15th, 16th is the Delray Affair. So that's all I've got. It's 9.59. <laughs> Any questions, anyone? Michael, you want to have some last thoughts on uh, density and affordable housing? Uh, I think I've made my point. So, <laughs> and it is Friday, so we should end on some kind of happy note. Okay, uh, looking, looking forward to Delray Fair. Go ahead. <laughs> that's it. That's the happy note. Looking forward to Delray Fair. Kept us alive for 50 years. Otherwise, everybody would have forgotten the name Delray. So it's wonderful. Thank you. 
Okay, have a great weekend, everyone. It's beautiful weather. Hope to see you out and about in town. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Bye. guys. Bye, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you.